Okay, let's do this. For those who follow me on Instagram, you already know this news. And for those who don't, I'm about to tell you the biggest and one of the most important news of my career so far. Okay, here we go. The first time that I'm presenting on national television is going to be on BBC's A Very British History. <laughs> Even saying that is still making my stomach go all funny and there's little butterflies flying around. Originally, for this announcement video, I had planned a whole script recalling childhood memories and emotional music and old pictures of myself growing up. Then I read the script back this morning and I know that I can be a complete cheese ball. You all know that. And I was just like, shoo, just, just reel it in. Just reel it in a little bit and then just get to it, you know? So here I am sitting in front of a door about to announce you one of the most exciting news of my life so far. So, a little bit more about the show. It is on its second season. The first series aired in 2018 to 2019 and there's going to be four episodes within this series. There's one on the British Chinese, there's one on the Birmingham Irish, the one on the British Bangladeshi, and the fourth one, boat people from Vietnam. Each episode is important, is representative of the cultures, and highlights the importance and the contributions it's made to British history and also modern day Britain. And I am really, really pleased to say that I am the presenter for the British Chinese episode. It aired earlier this week on BBC One London on the 3rd of January and I came back, got myself ready and I filmed my first reactions which you'll see here. Today is the 3rd of January 2020 and we are 11 minutes away from the soft launch um the first launch of a very british history episode two on the british chinese on bbc one london <sighs> i've been trying to keep my call cool since april and i feel like i've been waiting for it since now so it's been april like may june july august september october november december january so like nine and a half months that is nine months at the same time as having a baby should be starting any minute now it's about to show now on BBC One, Shu Lin offers her own take on the history of Britain's Chinese community in a very British history. Oh my god, that's the producer's voice! Okay, it's on there. She Guys, it's 3rd of January and the film, the documentary just started and I'm playing on BBC One right now. And it's a channel that my parents know. As soon as I said the BBC, they were like, oh, we know this channel because we used to play on the on the screen and the takeaway and it's the only channel we played. I'm like, yes water's gonna be on that channel now. For those who miss the London showing, it's going to be broadcast nationwide on Wednesday the 19th of February at 9pm on BBC4 live. Mm. <laughs> wow, keep an eye on this video and also across my socials. I'm going to double check to see if it's going to be available to be watched internationally because I know a lot of people have been asking from Hong Kong, Japan, Germany, the US, New Zealand, Australia. This really, really touches my heart because I know how much you guys wanted to support and to watch the show and to also find out more about the British Chinese community. So keep an eye on my socials and I will let you know. Um, it's also gonna be available on iPlayer for 29 days after the show has aired. So if you can't watch it on the 19th of February, then do not fear, it's going to be available online for you to watch afterwards as well. It is to me a love letter to the British Chinese community is to have representation in the media, is to have a voice within the community and is to acknowledge the contributions and to celebrate those contributions that the British Chinese community have made in, his, in Britain historically and also through the present day and the modern day as well. Having a show like this from one of the most important broadcasters in the world is especially important in this current day and age. I've been speaking to so many people um, since the show first aired earlier this week. It really, really makes me so happy to know that there's been such a positive feedback, especially from the British Chinese community. And I know so many of you have been saying, yes, there's finally representation in the media. We've been crying out for this video. We've been wanting a voice, we've been wanting to say so much and to celebrate the fact that we are more than what people stereotypically see us as. 
It's been a journey. I've been sitting on this since April. That's when the team first reached out in April. And I remember getting the email and my eyes were so wide. My heart was pumping so quickly. And I was just like, okay, let's try and do a really nice and structured professional email, but approachable, you know, like a nice email, friendly email, but still professional. And like, yeah, sure. Like we'd, lo we'd love to discuss this further. And inside I'm like, eee! had a Ferris meetings in April. And then we started filming pretty soon after that as well and we've been working on this since april until now which is february the show is going to be focusing on the british chinese community how it started and we're going to dive right back into time from the 1950s until the present day i also had the opportunity to interview food historians and find out more about british chinese food and how it was one of the first cuisines to pave the way for modern british dining today i also got to speak to legendary tv chefs and writers and men members of the community who have really set a light and celebrated everything there is to love about being a part of the British Chinese community. People such as Ken Hong, Xinhe Kuang, Lucy Mitchell from Sei Wa Hong, Sea Roof UK, Jeremy Pan, Go Kuan, Fuchsia Dunlop, and it was truly such an incredible honour to be able to speak to them and to hear their experiences. They have really, really paved the way for the generation. They've given us a voice, they've celebrated the community and it was so amazing to be a part of something like this. You'll be able to see Jay Garden, which was a takeaway I moved to when I was six years old, when we moved down from London. And then also the restaurant that I grew up in, which was at the time called Lucky Dragon, but now it's called the Forbidden Palace. You'll get to meet my dad and he'll be recounting his experience and journey of moving from China to the UK, his experience of working in Chinatown on his third day of arriving here, what that was like back in the 90s and the sacrifices that he had made in order for my sisters and I to have a better life. And every time I see that part on TV, I get really, really emotional because it just, it is like a thank you. I think all of this. And I think people who grew up in takeaways and people who had a similar experience growing up being British Chinese or being overseas, then I hope this will, you'll be able to relate to this as much as I did. And it was just a really good bonding experience for my dad and I to be a part of this as well. And he's always wanted to be a presenter and I feel like it was his time to shine. He absolutely owned it. And it was just really, really eye-opening to hear his story and my parents' story in more detail, especially because I'm now nearly at the age as they were when they first risked it all, dropped everything to move halfway across the world to try and have a better life for themselves um, at a country where they didn't speak the language, learning about a tree that they knew nothing about and living a life that was so different from their life back home. And it's been really inspiring for me to be able to speak to all of these people and all of these figures in our community and really drum in the importance of hard work, of building something with your own bare hands, to have resilience, the strength it takes, the courage, the bravery, and also noting that there are a hell of a lot of obstacles and challenges along the way. I mean, even including things like prejudice, racism, being alienated, divided, um, and segregated from your immediate community because a lot of people who moved over, who were working in the takeaway and catering trade, quite often you are quite far apart from one another. So there isn't like a main hub as such compared to like Chinatown where there is a large community of people being gathered together and being able to help each other out. Um, apart from things like Sunday school and Chinese school, which is what we, we went and used as an opportunity to see other people and meet other people that look like us. Um, so this is such an important show, not only to me, but to everybody who's involved in this community and people even outside of a community to have a better understanding of what it means to be British Chinese and to move away from the stereotyped view of being so solely reliant on the catering trade. So I was speaking to Jenny and her account on Instagram is Celestial Peach and I've admired her writing. She's currently part of a project called Humans of Chinatown and um, she asked me a question to ask, actually let me, let me load it up so I won't 
uh, so I'm giving her like enough credit because her wording is beautiful. Does the show focus on food and restaurants only or does it also cover the Chinese contribution in many other aspects of British life and society? Yes, it does. And in the show we also talk about identity struggles, Asian representation in the media or lack of, and also how we went from being a community who really relied heavily on the catering trade to now being a community that we can now celebrate educational and business success beyond the stereotypical views of solely being in takeaways and Chinese restaurants and we touch we talk to people in the media we talk to people of creative Chinese community centers we talk to people in politics we talk to lecturers actors it's all a celebration of our community and to highlight the fact that yes we are darn good at food we are incredible in catering but there are also so many other areas in which we are contributing to society as well and there are so much to be proud of, so much to celebrate, so much to shout about from the rooftops. So this is kind of like a love letter to all of that. You'll see that there are a few times as well in the show that I'm like, yeah, yeah, and inside I'm like, you shouldn't have been so enthusiastic because that means it's gonna be really hard for the editor to say. But I think some of the points were just so exciting that naturally I was just really excited to find out more, really excited to like keep the conversation going and that uh, translated on the screen um, and it was surreal. It was really, really surreal to be able to see my face on the TV screen that's beyond a YouTube vlogging camera and even watching it live for the first time on Monday, it was it was crazy in the best possible way of recalling everything that has been happening over the past nine months and to see such a labour of love from everybody involved. The pacing of it, the music choices, the archives, you also see like archives from actually when it was broadcast from the 50s and 60s and we got to um, speak to people who were the first people to move over to the UK to build up their businesses and a legacy. Yeah, the, the core messaging is vital, so important and it is just made of so much love and research and so many people have come together to create this um, and even though I'm just such a small piece of it, I am so beyond thankful and grateful that I am able to be a part of such an important show like this and I just haven't been able to stop smiling. It's like bursting, bursting of happiness and excitement and I'm just happy for you to see it. And I truly hope that from this, this is going to be the start of many other shows from other broadcasters and other networks that really celebrate other minority groups and ethnic groups within the UK, US and around the world and to give those voices that are dying to be heard in the media and to celebrate their stories, to celebrate their mark in history and all the work that they have done into building the society that we love today and especially during a time like this when there is a lot of hate and negativity around the world we've got the choice to either accept this negativity and all of this hate or we can say no it's not the world is not just full of hate the world is not full of negativity and this is an opportunity to celebrate the good in the world the humanity these stories that make us who we are the people from previous generations who have sacrificed so much in order for us to live better lives and for us to now be the figures to do the same for our future generation and to make the world a better place and i know this sounds maybe like a little bit too much but i do firmly believe that every little action helps and it doesn't have to be a massive heroic thing but even with the intentions of wanting to make a world a better place of having being able to be in a position and having a platform to let your voices be heard to defend those who aren't able to give their voices that's already going to make even a little tiny smidgen change but together and collectively it's able to make a bigger change and a bigger impact around the world i don't want to take this platform and the voice that i have for granted and to have this amazing community of like-minded people on youtube on instagram and i just want to take responsibility for that and to be able to defend those who don't have a voice or defend those who may not be able to speak their thoughts because they, English may not be their native language and they may not be able to f communicate that fluently. A bit emotional, 
uh, I feel like I'm like doing like a Nobel Peace or like an Oscars award speech or something when I've not really like don't feel like I've done nearly enough as much as clearly the speech is making it sound like but I do really want to thank the community for giving me the chance to be one of the voices to make us heard and I feel so so proud I'm already so proud to be British born Chinese but through this journey of creating this show and being a part of the show and just speak to so many amazing amazing people who have taught me so much I am even more proud to be British born Chinese because of this I really hope that you'll be able to join me in watching the show to say it again because it sounds really nice when I can say it out loud it's gonna be BBC's A Very British History it's be showing nationwide live on BBC4 on Wednesday the 19th of February at 9pm. I really hope that you will be able to join me in watching it and I can follow it along on social media. Maybe we should create a hashtag on this as well. If you simply do a hashtag, please leave some comments down below. I was thinking like a BBC on a BBC or like British Chinese on BBC or very British history. My, my mind is kind of like all over the place. So if you've got way better suggestions than the mind that just plucked through the air, then please leave it in the comments below. And if you've already watched the show, please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments as well. You've been sending me so many amazing messages on Instagram and my phone has never popped off as much as it has this week so I'm still going through the messages but please know that I, I love and appreciate every single one and your words and your words matter so much to me. Thank you for taking the time to celebrate this, to support this show, to send such encouraging and motivating words and last but not least, Thank you to the BBC for giving me this opportunity to be part of such an important show. Thank you for believing in me to even present on something as important as this. And thank you for teaching me so much over the last nine months and for being the best team and for also putting up with all of my silly puns and dad jokes along the way during train journeys and long car journeys and everything else in between. It's been an absolute pleasure to be a part of this and it is, I say this all with great pride. Um, so yeah, this is my announcement. It's me sitting in front of a door, sharing with you, my friends, one of the best news of my life. I am beyond excited to be able to share this moment with you. And yes, thank you, BBC4, 19th of Feb, 9 p.m. live for a British history. Gonna see my face. Hopefully see you there, and yes, thank you, thank you, many times over. End of the cheese ball shoe, and subscribe if you haven't already, if it's your first time here. I make food travel and lifestyle videos also, and if you like this, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, then follow me on Instagram, where I'm gonna be posting behind the scenes shots. This is already gonna be a really, really long and excitably rambly, waffly video, because that is what I do best when I don't have a professional crew to be like, yeah, like, chop it up. <laughs> I'm gonna end it here. I love you all so so very much. I'm so happy I get to excite. So I can't get my words. I'm so happy that I get to celebrate this with you. Thank you for just thank you. Since I found out in April, I haven't stopped saying, oh, it's gonna be a BBC on the BBC. And uh, for those who don't know, a BBC is British born Chinese. It's gonna be a BBC on the BBC, doing it for the BBC community. That kind of rhymes, that's kind of like a song. Should make it into a jingle. And I don't know what else rhymes with song. Okay. Um.